Good morning. Good morning. Wonderful. We're all here. Great. Well, you're in the right place. Welcome to Rock Hill Coverside Parish Church. And together we are once again joined together with Mary Hill Parish Church. And we um, are in the right place for the next hour or so. The sun is shining. It's a beautiful day. And you've all made it to church. So thank you. Well done. Um, we're going to be mapping out a story. It's literally happening in front of you. The boys are setting off to work. They're going to map out the story um, of the start of Lent. We haven't really had much chance to talk about the journey of Lent um, and our time in the wilderness um, along with Jesus. Um, and so we journey with Jesus today and we think about that start of Lent and we think about um, being called from Nazareth to the Jordan River to be baptised, to head out into the wilderness and to be tended um, by the angels to find wild animals. I think a snake is being drawn as we speak um, and a devil is going to tempt um, Jesus. So the boys are going to illustrate our story today um, and we're going to begin with some words. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to welcome the Zoom room too and see who's in the Zoom room. Who's in the Zoom room? Hello everybody in the Zoom room. Nice to see you. <laughs> all the way up to Colliston and all the way around Mary Hill. Great to see everybody. Um, thanks for joining us. Let's begin with a call to worship. Here's the call to worship today. God of the transitional moments, these Lenten times where ideas form us and hopes shape us and longing challenges us and generations push us and society questions us and faith provokes us and tomorrow calls us and resurrection breathes in us. May we live through this moment and recognize the gift that it is and the life that we live between glory and cross, between hill and garden, between darkness and dawn, between here and there. For such is our faith, O God, always transitional, and so may we dare to live with it. Take the chance of finding the future in the daring of tomorrow. And that from the questions, new adventures will arrive. And from crosses, stones will roll. And from winter, spring will and has returned. Let's pray together. Our loving Heavenly Father, we do not always know what to ask for in our prayers, for there is so much that we do not know or understand. Yet we know that you are active in our world, moving in human hearts and in the events of history to bring order out of chaos and good out of evil. So we come to you now, and in faith we place ourselves and our world into your hands, asking that your will be done despite everything that seems to conspire against it. Lord, we bring ourselves, just as we are, broken, imperfect, and yet hopeful, and we ask for your healing and transforming touch. Lord, we bring those who are part of our lives, family and friends, neighbours and colleagues at work, all those whom we meet in our day-to-day -day lives, and we leave them in your care. Lord, we bring our world, the rich and the poor, the powerful and the weak, the healthy and the sick, those who revel in freedom and those who fight for justice. Lord, bring your peace. Lord, we thank you that you are so involved in our lives, active in our world, concerned about everything you have made. We give you thanks that you hold all things in your hands. And so we leave them confidently with you. Praying in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. We're going to sing 
um, two songs back to back. I'm delighted that Ian's um, able to play for us this morning. And so we have live music. And so we've got two songs. One is Give Thanks to the Lord and the other is Light of the World. Thanks to the Lord, our God and King, His love endures forever. For He is good, He is above all things, His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise. With a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, His love endures forever. For the life that's been reborn, His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise, sing praise, sing praise. Forever God is faithful, forever God is strong. Forever God is with us forever. forever. On the rising to the setting sun, His love endures forever. And the grace of God we will carry on. His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise, sing praise, sing praise. Forever God is faithful, forever God is strong, forever God is with us forever. Forever God is faithful, forever God is strong, forever God is with us forever. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made this heart adore you. Hope of a life spent with you. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. All together worthy, all together wonderful to me. King of all days, oh so highly exalted. Glorious in heaven above. Humbly you came to the earth you created. All for love's sake became good. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. And I'll never know how much it costs. 
to see my sin upon that cross. I'll never know how much it cost to see my sin upon that cross. I'll never know how much it cost to see my sin upon that cross. I'll never know how much it cost to see my sin upon that cross. To worship, here I am to buy that. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. Well, hopefully you've all got um, two sheets of paper. And what, one of the sheets of paper you'll need in the next little section because get ready, we're going to play bingo. Now, some of you will be familiar with the concept of bingo. It's maybe been a wee while since you've played bingo. Some of you have even played Lent bingo with me before, but there are some key words and key um, things to think about when we're thinking about Lent. So I need you to make sure that you have a sheet. And more than that, you're going to need a pen to score off. And I'm going to ask the boys if they can help us with this, because you may have a bowl of pens. And you might be able to make sure that everybody's got a pen by taking a bowl and, yeah, taking a side of the room. Theo, you could help too. Um, do you want to go and see if anyone needs a pen? Um, here we go. If you need a pen, the boys have pens. And then you'll be able to score off each of the words as they are mentioned and as we talk our way through um, the significance of this time in the church calendar for us. Um, now, I'm really worried about Becca and Lorna not being able to join in. Do you have a bingo sheet? I'm re I really want you to play. You might win. There, there might be prizes. There won't be prizes. There won't be prizes. Okay. Thank you, Ian. Great job, boys. Okay. If you're ready, we'll begin. Um, the first word that you're looking for on your sheet, and you may have it and you may not, is the word Lent. If you have Lent there, you can score it off. Lent is the period of time leading up to Easter. It's a bit like Advent. We count our way down to a major Christian festival. And as I tell the kids in school, I say Easter is even bigger for us here in the church than Christmas. Do you think that's true? I say it, um, and I mean it. Um, Easter is even bigger and more important for us as Christians um, than Christmas. The children cannot believe that anything could be more important than Christmas. So Lent is the word that you have scored off, or maybe not. Spring is the next word. You might have it on your sheet if you do. You can score it off. Spring, Lent means spring. That's literally the, the meaning of the word Lent. It means lengthen because the days are lengthening and we're seeing that. We're enjoying the sunshine and we're enjoying the lengthening days of spring. The third word is snow. Um, snow, <laughs> maybe you've got snow on your sheets. It's not really a Lenten word, but sometimes it snows in Lent. And we're surprised and we say, how can it snow when we're getting into spring? But we've had some pretty cold starts, had some frost, and then the days have brightened and got better. And there's been no snow so far in Lent, at least not down here in Glasgow. The next one is a number and it's 40. 40. Lent lasts 40 days or thereabouts. It's actually a bit more complicated than that, but I don't have time to talk you through it all just now because it's too complicated for me. But Lent is meant to last 40 days. So there we go. Hope you've got a few. Has anyone got a few scored off? Yeah, excellent. Good, excellent. Okay. Pancakes. Pancakes are important in Lent. Most people think that Shrove Tuesday and Pancake Tuesday is the start of Lent, but it's not. It's not the start of Lent. Um, it's when you use up all the stuff in the house just before Lent begins. So pancakes. Um, did anyone have pancakes this year? 
Okay, did anyone mark the day? Don't be shy. If you, there was pancakes in our house. Okay. Next one is Ash. I think it's just one word on your sheets, but it stands for Ash Wednesday. Lent starts with Ash Wednesday. It was the 2nd of March this year. People put ash on their foreheads to remind them that they will one day die. It's to remind us of our mortality. Ashes to ashes, dust and dust. From dust we come from, from dust we will return. And it's the start of Lent. So if ash is on your sheet, score it off. The next word is fasting. Fasting. Um, lots of people give up something for Lent and use their time and their energy for something else. And so sometimes that would involve fasting or a changing of your routine. Wilderness is the next word. Wilderness. Jesus was 40 days and nights in the wilderness preparing for his ministry. Um, and so we journey with Jesus through Lent. And that's what the boys are illustrating down in front of me as they're drawing um, the Bible story for today. Tempted is the next word. Tempted. Jesus was tempted by the devil three times, three major temptations. Um, and they um, were, of course, resisted. And I love telling this story in school and saying, did Jesus give in? And they say, no, he didn't give in. Um, and so we, we build the story of, of Jesus, the, the superhero in schools. Um, the next word is temple. We think about Jesus turning the tables in the temple um, as part of the um, story through Lent, turning the tables. It appears in different parts, in different Gospels, um, but it's a key part of the Lent story where we get some understanding and some um, feeling for how Jesus would be opposed and how things would turn sour. Next word is feasting. 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 The idea is to fast during the week and then to feast on the Sundays. Did you know that? That's all part of Lent. Um, it's a penitential time, but the Sundays are feast days, celebrations. And so you're allowed to eat um, and to enjoy the Sundays. Colour. Colour is a word perhaps on your sheet. It's certainly one that is important to me as we celebrate Easter and try and burst Easter out of our church buildings and into the community. Easter is a time of colour. Um, it is no longer um, in black and white. Um, we need to burst out of our buildings and tell everybody about the colourful Easter story. Um, so as, the, as nature becomes um, so colourful, so Easter is a colourful story. Baptism. We're nearly there. We're getting there. Baptism. Lent is a time when we think about our own baptism and what that means to us and we think about Jesus' baptism, again, that's getting illustrated down the River Jordan, has been drawn in the picture um, down in front of me. We think about Jesus being baptised by John the Baptist in the Jordan River. Palm Sunday. Lots of you seem to have that one. This is the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem on a donkey, the wonderful story, um, very much cherished by all of us, um, where Jesus enters Jerusalem on a donkey, an unexpected way um, to come and announce yourself. Nearly there. Monday, Thursday. Have you got Monday, Thursday on your sheet? Or Monday? can't remember what I wrote. Um, the day when we think of and reenact the Last Supper. And in some traditions, it would be when um, feet are washed in the sanctuary. And so your feet might get washed um, on Monday, Thursday, or you may share the, the bread and the wine and think of the Last Supper. Good Friday. Good Friday, the day that Jesus died on the cross. Why is it good? I ask the children when I go to school and they say, it cannot be good. How can it be good? And so we play with those words and that concept on Good Friday, very much the saddest day of the church calendar. Easter Sunday. Bingo. Oh, Jim, well done. Did anyone get bingo? Yeah. Easter Sunday. It's the day we're all watching and waiting for and looking forward to. And that hopefully completes your bingo card. 
and you can shout bingo, you can shout hallelujah, you can shout um, praise the Lord, um, or whatever seems um, the right thing to say. So Lent, it's such an important time for us um, in the church. It's an important part of the church year. And we're midway through Lent, and that is the focus of our service and our time today. We're going to hear some music. It's music by um, a group called the Rend Collective, um, and it's talking about God's name being powerful. And so if Esme is able to, to line that up, we'll listen to that just now. to the darkness You're the only right among the wrong You're the only hope among the chaos You are the voice that calls me on Louder than every lie My sword in every fight The truth will chase away the night your name is power over darkness Freedom for the captives Mercy for the broken and the hopeless Your name is faithful in the battle Glory in the struggle Mighty, it won't let us down or fail us Your name is power two readings, one from the Psalms and that story um, from the start of Mark's Gospel that will lead us on today. So from Psalm 25, verses 1 to 12. To you, O Lord, I offer my prayer. In you, my God, I trust. Save me from the shame of defeat. 
Don't let my enemies gloat over me. Defeat does not come to those who trust in you, but to those who are quick to rebel against you. Teach me your ways, O Lord. Make them known to me. Teach me to live according to your truth, for you are my God who saves me. I always trust in you. Remember, O Lord, your kindness and constant love, which you have shown from long ago. Forgive the sins and errors of my youth. In your constant love and goodness, remember me, Lord. Because the Lord is righteous and good. He teaches sinners the path they should follow. He leads the humble in the right way and teaches them his will. With faithfulness and love, he leads all who keep his covenant and obey his commands. Keep your promise, Lord, and forgive my sins, for they are many. Those who have reverence for the Lord will learn from him the path they should follow. And from Mark chapter 1, verses 9 to 13, we read this. Not long afterwards, Jesus came from Nazareth in the province of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. As soon as Jesus came up out of the water, he saw heaven opening and the spirit coming down on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my own dear son. I am pleased with you. At once, the Spirit made him go into the desert, where he stayed 40 days, being tempted by Satan. Wild animals were there also, but angels came and helped him. Amen. We're going to watch in just a little moment, um, two minutes of video of me, um, (laughs) because I recorded it and because um, I knew I'd be talking so much and you'd be tired of me speaking. So I thought I'd have another me on a TV screen giving you a question and the key question that I want us to consider about and then to talk about in a wee pair or a three as you've got somebody beside you. Um, And the key question is going to be, how is it all going for you in the wilderness today? How is it all going for you? in the wilderness today, because I think that's the key question from here. As we think our way into the Lent story, we think of Jesus in the wilderness, and we relate to this time of being in the wilderness. Maybe you feel um, like in terms of power up, maybe you feel you're on 3%. Um, Children often come to me saying, I'm on 3%, I'm on 3%. And of course they mean that their phone or their device is nearly run out. But maybe, maybe you feel like you're on 3% and you're just hanging on in there just now. Maybe you feel that way um, has been um, the case for for, um, a number of of years now, maybe even longer. Um, And you need and want and and recognize the church um, and your faith powers you up. And I want you to get into that kind of conversation. But to set it all up, I'm going to ask Esme just to play that wee short video. Thank you. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. Jesus, fresh from the waters of baptism and with the voice of God ringing in his ears and knowing himself as the beloved of God, Jesus retreated to the wilderness taking his fill of communion with God, knowing that all too soon everything would be changed forever. And realising that as soon as he stepped back onto the treadmill of life, even before that, the opportunity for solitude, for rest, for soaking up the pleasure of God would be lost forever. Sure enough, even before he emerged from the wilderness, he was offered the temptations of comfort, of wealth, and of power. Temptation that sought to sabotage his mission before it even began. I wonder, how do we hear this all these years later? And how is it going for you in the wilderness today? 
on those days when our status as the beloved of God seems so fragile, when we feel vulnerable and ready to give in, when it seems that it would be easier to use our power to assert our authority in ways that trample on others' dreams, may we be stopped in our tracks by the God who offers rest and retreat and renewal in the middle of the chaos of this life that we live. And so may we know God powering us up in this time to choose hunger over comfort and compassion over power and love over everything. Okay, you've got a couple of minutes to talk to somebody beside you. How's it going for you in the wilderness today? How do we think about that or a blether to somebody about that? I heard little snippets of really good conversations there. I, I hope you enjoy opportunities just to share a little bit um, with each other and to, and to be honest with each other because um, that's really um, the very best way to be, to be friends and to be family um, and to, to care for each other. Two people um, came in this morning and said, um, I was worried about you, Stuart, because I just didn't think you were quite right last time I saw you, um, which of course I smile at. But I'm so grateful that folks um, would be caring enough um, about me to, to ask me how I am and, and really how I am. So I hope you appreciate these chances to say whether you are feeling like you're on the 3% just now um, or how you're going um, in this time. We're going to hear some music and again it's um, recognising our, um, our brokenness and how God can, can heal us and make us, make us whole. And so it's called You Shine Through. Again, it's not one you'll be familiar with, so we'll just listen to this and reflect on the words. a heart stretched out upon the floor in our weakness and our failures your light shines beauty to this world from our broken hearts we're crying out through the cracks in all the through the fractures and our dust You shine through You shine through In the darkness you're the dawn Blazing like the morning sun You shine through You shine through Us. For your cross, it speaks the final word. Guilt and shame are now behind us, and you are making us brand new.
Well, you know, as well as I do, that beginnings matter. And that's where we are still in our Lenten journey. And these short verses from the first chapter of Mark's Gospel seem to jump off the page. And they're at one and the same time very brief and very dark. Jesus, still dripping from his baptism, is driven by the same spirit, the spirit that so clearly and wonderfully confirmed his identity out into the wilderness. The wilderness, the iconic place of testing and the temptation and struggle in Israel's history. And then as he emerges, his ministry commences. When John the Baptist is taken by force and arrested, the prelude, as we know, to John's murder, and Jesus declares that his time is fulfilled, and he will not use that word again until the end of Lent. And the moment when he also is arrested and taken by force also to be killed. Mark's beginning is not just brief, it's somber, it's dark, foreboding and ominous. And it's valuable for us to remember this on the third Sunday of Lent. Not, of course, to overdo this somber and penitential nature of Lent, but rather because parts of our life are dark, aren't they? They are somber, they are ominous, and they are at times really difficult. This passage, and indeed all of Lent, speak to an important, if at times difficult to name, element of our life in this world. For it's just as we spoke about a few weeks ago, we can all too easily fall into thinking that because Jesus is so good, he'd really rather have nothing to do with us. The real us, that is, not the person we're trying to be, hoping to be, promising to be, or whatever, but the real us, warts, failings, sin, brokenness, and all. Now, I remember as clearly as if it were yesterday, speaking about God's grace at a school assembly. I'd spoken about God's grace and how God wants so desperately to draw us into his love. And afterwards, quite unusually, I got some feedback. Mr. Matthews, the young person, said, I don't think you'd say those words if you really knew what I'd done. And the ache in those words stays with me still. How many people wonder the same thing. And as I thought about this, the words of a song struck me, right out of the, uh, right of the blue. If I'm made in his image, then he's a failure too. If I'm made in his image, then he's a failure too. Can God possibly love us if he knew just how broken and at times dark our lives can be? The answer, and I hope you already know it, is yes. Yes, he can, yes, he does, and yes, he will. And this passage reminds us that Jesus came into the darkness and violence precisely in order to be joined to our brokenness and to redeem it. And Lent reminds us that whenever we find ourselves in the wilderness of disease or loneliness or joblessness or depression or war or all the other things that challenge us in this moment, Jesus has been there before and meets us there in order to bear our burdens with us and for us. Mark's beginning is dark because it's realistic. It's more than likely that Mark was writing to people who knew firsthand suffering and hardship. So yes, this is a dark beginning. And truth be told, it will get darker. But take care to note that it's in the darkest part of the story that God's love and mercy is revealed most clearly. Clearly enough that even one of those who put Jesus to death can finally see God at work in and through this broken man. So beginnings are important, but so too are endings. And the Lenten journey we continue today will have a good ending. So hear the promise today that not even death could hold the Lord of mercy and grace. 
and hear the encouragement. But as ever, I want to thank you for your company as we tell the story to each other from beginning to end, week by week, and live it out through him who keeps us going and saves our soul. For this is the word of God for us today. Amen. So as we make our response to God in hearing these words, let's pray together. Loving God, there are times when you seem very distant, when for all our prayers, it seems to us that even you may have abandoned us. There is so much in life that we cannot make sense of, and often we feel bewildered by the uncertainty and mystery of it all. Yet whether we see it or whether we don't, you are always there at work, bringing good out of evil, joy out of sorrow, hope out of despair, and light out of darkness. Lord, teach us then to put our trust in you, knowing that through that though all else fails us, you never will. And so may we again offer ourselves and our regular giving out of all the good things that you give us and to offer our service to your people here in this place. For we ask it in your precious name. Amen. We're going to sing a closing song. Um, Ian's going to lead us. And it's Amazing Grace we're going to sing together. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Was grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieve how precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. His grace at all be saved thus far, and grace will lead. When we've been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise. And when we first become Please be seated. I do have a blessing for you, and it's a blessing that has actions if you're the kind of person that likes to use your, your hands and your body um, to pray. Um, and so in the blessing, there is a laying down and you can open your hand to, to lay down 
um, all that you do not need. And then you can pick up and you can close your hand again to pick something up. And then you can let go. I'm repeating the first action again. And then renew and you can close your hand again. And then the last thing we do is we travel. And you might put your hand out to travel onwards and out into the community that we love and serve. So let's have a blessing. So may we lay down that which we do not need, but also that which we fear to let go of and trust you more. May we pick up that which we are scared to do, for we do not know where it will take us and trust you more. May we let go that which we find difficult to do, for they have been our bedfellows for so long and we fear what we will miss, yet may we trust you more. And may we renew that which we know is worn, yet we are familiar with it. It has kept us well, and we can never replace it, yet may we trust you more. And may we travel with you through the season of Lent and join with you on the way. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and all those you love. Amen.